Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, and I host the Valder Beebe Show on FM radio and internet television. I am famously known for that celebrity interview, which I conduct by cell phone, in studio, or satellite media tours. Go to ValderBeebeShow.com, YouTube.com slash ValderBeebeShow, or our partnership network with Business in the Black, which is BlackSuccessAcademy.com, and click on the Valder BB Show's channel. I'll see you there. No. Good morning, Dallas. Thank you for staying with us this morning. We've been talking about food this morning with the chef that was previously on. Now I have the opportunity for you to hear about peanut allergies. Dr. Mustafa, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. You know, I guess if you don't have that allergy, you don't think about it, but I know people have all kinds of allergies. Like I have allergy to uh, citrus. So if I get a margarita, I have to tell the people, oh, hold the, hold the citrus. And, and it's a big deal. It really is a big deal. Is it just as big for peanut allergies? Yeah, so peanut allergy affects about 1% to 2% of the population. There's 15 million Americans in the United States with food allergy, and those are not the only ones affected. Their family and friends are affected. So this is a big problem, and that's why the recent guidelines on preventing peanut allergy before it occurs is so important. And I think it must be really important because I'll see uh, warnings on the side of labels that say uh, peanuts were also processed in this plant, but the, but the product is not peanut. Well, obviously, it's a far-reaching allergy. Sure. So, again, it affects a big group of individuals. Peanut allergy is unique that it's typically a lifelong allergy for most individuals. 20% of children cannot grow it, but many can have it throughout life. And it absolutely affects diet, uh, quality of life, socialization. So it would be great to prevent it rather than kind of treat it and react to it like we are today. And that's why these guidelines that were recently released on prevention rather than, of course, treatment. Okay. I'm going to take a Facebook question because people hear us on all kinds of mediums. So I'm going to take Facebook this morning. Sure. One of the questions is, my son, I think he has a peanut allergy. How do I define this? Yeah, so it's very, very important to um, have a physician diagnose food allergies with the proper uh, history and testing. Um, so there's no magic test for food allergies, so you really want to see someone, uh, an expert in the field. Things that raise concerns for food allergies are when children or adults are consuming a food and consistently developing immediate symptoms. Um, most reactions happen within 20 minutes, almost always within two hours. And most reactions involve skin, rash, hives. Other symptoms can be coughing, difficulty breathing, swelling, nausea. But you really, really do want to talk to your pediatrician or an allergist about really confirming whether someone has a food allergy or not, because it has so many implications. Is this an allergy, Dr. Mustafa, that's combined to children or adults also, or just children? Uh, many ch food allergies are start in childhood, but peanut allergy, like I said, can certainly last into adulthood. So common food allergies in childhood include milk and egg and wheat and soy, but many children outgrow these allergies. In adults, the most common food allergies are really peanuts, tree nuts, um, and seafood. So these tend to be more of the lifelong allergies. But again, any food allergy can develop at any time. And similarly, food allergies can also resolve over time. When someone, the, uh, these children have uh, peanut allergies, are these the people that use that, that, that uh, EpiPen kind of thing? Do they fall in that category? Sure. Anyone with a diagnosed food allergy, including peanut allergy, the treatment of choice today is avoidance of the food and treatment of accidental injection, uh, ingestions. And epinephrine is the treatment of choice for a significant um, allergic reaction. So anyone with a food allergy should have a, an epinephrine auto-injector on hand at all times and should strictly uh, be reading labels avoiding foods. And that goes for all foods, including peanut allergy. Peanut allergy is unique because reactions tend to be a little more severe, so it's even more important. But that really is a blanket statement for all food allergies. 
Doctor, if there's a place that my audience can find more information, especially like the person who doesn't know if they have a peanut allergy, but, you know, the child has one, where would you send them on the web? Yep. On the web, peanutallergyfacts.org is a great resource with the recent guidelines about how to best introduce peanuts into the infant's diet and practical tips on how to safely do it in a young child. So that would be a great resource online. And then, of course, always your pediatrician, primary care doctor, or an allergist. Dr. Mustafa, this is great information, especially I know for parents with young kids. Thank you for gracing the Valder BB Show and talking about this important topic. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.